Hey guys, Mr. Smith here, shooting a video review lesson on uh, factoring. Uh, factoring is a very necessary skill. Um, without this factoring skill, uh, we won't be able to do a lot of the techniques or uh, content that we need to do to get through this course um, and beyond. Um, uh, we're, today we're gonna review some techniques you should already be familiar with from earlier math courses. And uh, yeah, uh, let's get started. So generally in your grade 10 course, the first, one of the first types of factoring that you guys are introduced to just clicked off my photo there. I want to look at myself. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Not worth restarting the video for. One of the first types you guys look at is simple trinomial factoring. Um, a simple trinomial is a trinomial where the uh, a value is one. So it's expression that looks like those two I have down there. Generally, a simple trinomial looks like this. You have an x squared term and the coefficient on the x squared is one. And then you have some term on the linear, some coefficient on the linear term called B, then you have some constant term C. And the key idea, and it, like, I mean, especially in this course, there's like 35 of you at this point, like coming from different schools, lots of different teachers. It's, it's the same, it's the same process, but everybody has their own kind of unique way of explaining it. But the idea is, you know, to factor a simple trinomial, you look for Look for two numbers that multiply to that constant term C, multiply to C, uh, and they also, and that add to the middle term. Right, let's see why this is. Just really quickly, you don't need to copy this down, but like if you were to expand, let's say x plus two times x plus three, let's go back to grade 10 math here. You know, you do your, your FOIL, your double distributive law, x times x, that gives you your x squared term. And then two times three on the end, that gives you your plus six, right? Two times three. And where does the middle com term come from? Well, it, it comes from doing x times three, three x, and two times x, two x x squared plus 5x plus 6. Look, the 2 and the 3 multiply to the end number and add to the middle number. This is the basic idea. I mean, at this point, this is a skill, like hopefully that is close to, if not automatic for you guys, close to automatic. So looking at A, and my, my ideal scenario is that you guys can look at A and just write the factored form. You don't need to write anything out. But I mean, the process is, we, we think about two numbers that multiply to 18 and that add to 11. Once you have those two numbers, two and nine in this case, x plus two, x plus nine, and you've factored the simple trinomial. Simple trinomials, simple to factor, just you play the sum product game. Uh, for the next one, looking for numbers that um, multiply to, you know what, this one, uh, I'll fix this up on your lesson sheet, guys. But this should be uh, minus 24. Um, so looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 24 and add to minus 2. If it wasn't, if it was positive 24, there wouldn't be any numbers. So I'll fix that up on your lesson sheet, guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so, you know, if you're if, if you were struggling, you just set up your factored form. You know it's x, you know it's x. Hey, my two numbers multiply to a negative. What's the only way that can happen? If one number is positive and one number is negative. And now it's just playing that numbers game. What numbers multiply to 24 that differ by two that can give me negative two. And upon a little bit of consideration, four and negative six multiply to negative 24 and add to negative two. It's simple trinomial factoring. Ideally at this point, this is an automatic skill for you guys. Let's continue. 
Uh, from there, this simple trinomial factoring may have been the first for some of you guys. Common factoring may have been the first too. We introduced common factoring to help multi uh, factor more complex trinomials generally in grade 10. The idea is that you look for common factors Uh, but you look for them two spots in the coefficients and the variables coefficients mm -hmm. uh, and the variables and we'll do a couple examples as well so looking at example a looking at the coefficients two and six what is in common between two and six well both can be divided by two two is part of my greatest common factor and now I look at the variables. The first term has a squared, two a's. The last one only has one. They have one a in common. The first term has b squared, two b's. And the second term has three, b cubed. They have two b's in common. Two a b squared, we call our, is our greatest common factor. And then what do we have left? When you divide two a b squared from the first term, all you're left with is a single a when you divide two out of negative six that's negative three and we've taken out the a and we're left with the, just a, a single b a minus three b this is common factoring again ideally this is a skill that's basically automatic for you guys coming into the course you don't hopefully you know hopefully for most of you guys this review lesson is not necessary and you can kind of kind of blaze forward um but yeah we Common factoring almost has to be an automatic skill. We don't want to be uh, spending our, a lot of our brain power on the factoring so that we can do other stuff. Uh, looking at B, looking at the coefficients, 3, 3, and 36, a 3 goes into those guys. Looking at the variables, x squared, x, and, no, there, and, and, and a constant term. These do not have any variables in common. 3 is our GCF here. What's left over when you divide out the 3? You're left with x squared plus x and then minus 12 and now we consider can we now keep factoring what's left looks like a simple trinomial can we apply what we did reviewed in the first slide and we can uh, two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to one on the positive x let's go here so ignore that it equals three it's a positive four and negative three okay so we can continue factoring that so sometimes you might have to combine methods you common factoring and then do another type of factoring again this should be um should be familiar to us and if in case it has been a while hey we've now got two examples in the books and you got a lot more practice to reference as well all right let's continue uh the next type of factoring you kind of look at kind of is a, a variation of common factoring uh, and you use it when you have four terms um common factoring or group factoring involves grouping your four terms you know, sometimes more but generally we do it with four uh, into either pairs or three and one and uh, you'll see why in a second let's look at this first example so in our first example here if you look at every single term there's nothing in common with everything not every term has an a a b an x or a y however you know if i look at these first and third terms, AX and AY, I could common factor those guys. And BY and BX, I, they have a B in common. I could common factor those. So it's a, a common method for, in this case, is you know if you can common factor pairs, group them in pairs. And I'm going to rewrite this as AX plus AY plus BX plus by. I haven't changed anything. I've just reordered the pairs. And now look, I can common factor the first pair and the second pair. I can take out an a. I'm left with x plus y. In the second pair, I can common factor out, common factor out a b, and I'm left with x plus y. And look, those two, uh, two parts of that expression have a common factor that's a binomial x plus y is in common between each part and when i remove x plus y from the first bit i have a and the second bit i have b so it is possible sometimes to um to factor 
um, a uh, expression with four terms by uh, group factoring, by seeing if you can make pairs. Uh, now this next one will not involve making pairs. You can try you like, you would not be successful. However, look at B and look at three, any three of those four and see if you can seek some kind of pattern that maybe we can use our earlier stuff with. If you wanna pause and reflect on that, could it be group? Th uh, three of these terms away from the fourth perhaps? Uh, and we can. So if we look at the first three terms, uh, that's a simple trinomial. And if we think what numbers multiply to one and add to negative two, it's minus, minus, it's minus one and minus one. Now, later on in this review lesson, uh, we talk about perfect square trinomials. So you guys may have recognized that that is a perfect square trinomial. And it factors into x minus one times x minus one or x minus one squared. We still have our minus y squared on the end. Um, now, uh, here is the point to that. X minus one squared minus y squared, that is a special pattern. That is a difference of squares. Now, um, let's. Uh, we are gonna be covering difference of squares a bit later on. Um, uh, you know what? I think let's call an audible here. I think it might be helpful for us to just do a couple of these guys and then kind of revisit that one. You guys have your lesson sheet in front of you guys. So let's just flip to the difference of squares and review that and then see how that helps us in our previous one. This pattern is a pattern you guys look at in grade 10. It's a very helpful pattern. It's a pattern that can help you factor things more quickly. Um, and when you expand uh, a minus b times a plus b, so it doesn't matter what a and b are, they can be numbers, variables, terms. When you multiply these two binomials together, this always happens, right? You get a squared minus b times positive b is negative b squared. But then you get this, a times b is ab, and minus b times a is minus ab. And these guys always cancel out, right? They divide out. This pattern happens all the time, which means you can actually work backwards using this pattern to factor. Here's an example. 25x squared minus one. It's a difference, it's subtraction, between two perfect squares. What do I mean by perfect squares? Well, what can you multiply 25x, what can you multiply by itself to give 25x squared? 5x. And what can you multiply by itself to give one? It's one. 5x minus one, 5x plus one. It's a difference, subtraction, of two perfect squares. You can always use this pattern. Maybe take a pause. Can you do the next one? 9x squared minus y to the power of 4. If you want to pause the video and unpause when you're ready, or just follow along, totally fine. But this is a difference of squares. It's a difference, subtraction, and 9x squared and y to the power of 4 are perfect squares. 3x times itself gives 9x squared. And y squared times itself gives you y to the power of four. They are difference of squares. It's a pattern that hopefully you guys have um, uh, kind of burned into your skulls after grade 10 and 11. It's something that we're just gonna pull from in this course whenever we need it. Hey, that's a difference of squares. Here's how it factors. You know, in this video lesson, we'll show a few steps and then moving forward in our other lessons, you know, sometimes we'll just be like, okay, this factors to this. We don't need to show all that work like we did in our grade 10 course. But check out B here. This is a difference of squares as well. It's one perfect square minus another perfect square. So how would this work if we factor it? So set up our big brackets. Um, the y squared is the easy part, right? We're going to have minus y. We're going to have plus y. And then x minus 1 out front and x minus one out front in the back. <laughs> nothing actually to, to nothing actually to complete to finish this one off. That, like that was it. This is the difference of squares. x minus one squared is just x minus one all squared. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we did some group factoring where we, uh, instead of doing a two and two pairing, we paired off three because it was a trinomial that we could factor easily. And then we applied a difference of squares. So again, sometimes you might have to combine some methods together. Are we going to run across situations like this all the time? No, 
but like when we do come across them, we want to be able to handle them, right? All right. So uh, the last type of factoring you guys kind of get to in the grade 10 course is, okay, you, you, try, you tried simple trinomial factoring, you tried common factoring, and maybe group factoring. And, you know, sometimes those things don't work. You know, there might not be a common factor. It might not be a simple trinomial. In that case, we have this last resort to factor complex trinomials. So a complex trinomial, I might just add a little off to the side here, is a trinomial with the form ax squared plus bx plus c. But in a complex trinomial, the value of a is not 1. If it was 1, it'd be a simple trinomial. We could factor accordingly. So um, at this point in your math careers, you've done a lot of these. You don't need me to reteach you the method or the why, but the key idea is that, you know, much like simple trinomial factoring, we find a pair of numbers, so two numbers uh, that multiply. In this case, uh, not to the constant term at the end, C, but multiply to the product of the first number, A, and the last number, C. Um, and the add to B. And again, we're not going to, we're in the grade 12 functions course. I don't need to go back to grade 10 and re-derive the whys of all this. This is just the, you know, how we do it. Again, it's something we hopefully have in the toolbox. Um, but let's just put this in a couple examples. So looking at this guy, you can't common factor it. It's not a simple trinomial. So we use decomposition. How does that work? Find two numbers that multiply to the product of A and C. 12 times 1 is 12 and adds to the B, 13. What numbers do that? 12 and 1 multiply to 12 and add to 13. But how do we use those guys? In this method called decomposition, which is kind of like, uh, you know, different teachers teach different methods. Most teachers have decomposition as one of the methods they teach. Um, so we'll, I'll use decomposition here. What we do is we decompose, we break up 13x into those two numbers, 12 and 1. So 12x plus 1x. And then from there, we use our group factoring skill. Look at the first two terms, 12x squared and 12x. Pair those guys off. Pair the last guys off. What's in common? Well, they each have a 12 and they each have an x. And what's left when you divide it, divide those out, divide 12x out? You're left with x plus 1. Look at the last two terms. Really, there's no common factor there. I mean, it's really 1. You can't divide anything out of x and 1. So we have plus x plus 1. I'll just write them in brackets just for a visual. And look, those two halves have that x plus 1 in common. x plus 1, 12x plus 1. We've used decomposition to factor this complex trinomial. Um, let's continue. And then maybe I'll just toss in one other method that maybe sticks with some of you guys you've seen before, uh, but it won't get too crazy. Let's look at this guy here. So let's apply the same method. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 3 times 4 is 12 and add to negative 8. So a little bit of thought. If they multiply to a positive, they're both positive or both negative. If they have to add to negative 8, both these numbers are negative. And the numbers that work are 2 and 6. Uh, negative 2 and negative 6 add to negative 8, also multiply to 12. It doesn't matter how you decompose the negative 8. I'll just do it this way. I'll do minus 2x, minus 6x, plus 4. It really doesn't matter. It's all going to work out the same. Pair them up. 3x squared minus 2x. Uh, they have an x in common. Left with 3x minus 2. Looking at minus 6 and 4, 6 and 4 have a common factor of 2. Taking out 2 would leave me negative 3x. So I'm going to take out negative 2. The reason being is that will leave me with positive 3x and 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. It gives me those matching binomials. So if have 3x minus 2 times x minus 2. And we've common factored it. Now I would like to share with you guys another method. So I call this the Australian method. Um, uh, another colleague of mine calls this the triple play method. 
I mean, there's probably 20 different nicknames and you may have seen this method before. An alternative way to do a complex trinomial, say we're doing B again, you still got to play that numbers game, but another way to get to the finished product is to set up two brackets. And my coefficient here on, on uh, A is three. So I set up two brackets, three X and three X. And I call it the Australian method because I put another three down under. And then what were our two numbers? It was minus two and minus six. That's actually the fact, that's actually factored. Like that's it. We clean up a little bit, three X minus six. I can divide those guys by three and I'm left with three X minus two and X minus two. And it works. Um, the reason I, I personally don't teach that all the time is because, you know, decomposition, you can watch it work as you go. Um, uh, the Australian method, as I call it, is a little hand wavy. And, um, you know, I can do the first one with it as well. For the first one, if we use that method, it would be 12x in one bracket, 12x in another, and you divide by 12. Uh, play the numbers game. The two numbers are multiplied by 12 and added 13. We're 12 and 1. So plus 12, plus 1, and that's it. And then you can always simplify 12x and plus 12. I can divide those guys by 12, right? And it gives me x plus 1. 12x plus one, it works. So, I mean, uh, I prefer decomposition. There are other methods there as well. I just kind of showed you one. If you have a method that you learned and it works for you, fantastic. Let's continue. All right, we did go over difference of squares factoring. In the last pattern, perfect square trinomial factoring. So this is a pattern you guys look at in grade 10. And I always tell my students to not view it as one more type of factoring, but view it as a shortcut that can help you make factoring easier. So the key is you have two perfect squares in your trinomial. Um, it can factor into either a plus B or a minus B squared, but you have to have this special condition where if you multiply A and B and double it, it has to give you that middle term. Let me show you what I mean by that. So x squared minus 12x plus 36. If you want to check to see if it's a perfect square trinomial, so here we have, you know, x squared, perfect. The root of x squared is x, right? The root of 36 is 6. Well, if I do x, well, if I, if I do x times 6 and I double that, what do I get? I get 12x. Everything checks out. This means it is a perfect square trinomial, and I can write this as x minus 6 squared. Why the minus? Because it's minus 12x. You know, that's really it, guys. This is a special pattern. So, like looking at b, okay, 9x squared and 1, they're both perfect square numbers. <clears throat> so, if I took their roots and double, multiplied them and doubled it, so 2, the root of 9x squared is 3x, the root of 1 is 1. 2 times 3x times 1 is 6x. Okay, this is also a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor it as 3x plus 1 squared. Looking at the last one, 4x squared is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. The root of 4x squared is 2x. The root of 25 is 5. What do you get when you double that product? 2 times 2x times 5? You actually get 20x. This guy is not a perfect square trinomial. It does not equal to 2x plus 5 squared. No, no, no. It does not. If it were, it would have to be, if it was going to be 2x plus 5 squared, it would have to be uh, 20x. So yeah, just it's just another tool in the toolbox moving forward when we're working together this term. You know, at times I'll be like, okay, this is a perfect square trinomial and here is how it factors. We're not going to show all these intermediate steps. This is good for review. Moving forward, the factoring just has to be something we can do relatively quickly and automatically. You know, maybe not so much, like not in the grade 10 course, when you're just learning it, but like in this course, it's a skill we're kind of expected to have and we'll do it a bit more quickly. Okay, um, so I've given you guys three here to try. And they're all quadratic functions. And I've given you guys just some leading questions. Now, I want to be clear again. 
the uh, the goal with these for me is for you guys just to, is just to write down the answer, not have to show a lot of work or any work at all. These are questions you can just ask in your mind though, but I've just laid it out here for you just to kind of check, check the boxes visually. Let's look at this one. Can I common factor this one? I certainly cannot. X squared 12X and 35 have nothing in common. Is it a special pattern? Uh, it's not a difference of squares. It's not a perfect square, so no. Is it a simple trinomial? It's just X squared. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I can just use my perfect square or my simple trinomial factoring. What two numbers multiply to 35 and add to 12? Well, those two numbers are five and seven. X plus five, X plus seven. If you looked at A and just said, okay, it's X plus five, X plus seven, and it took you five seconds, I love it. That's great. If you had to show a bit of work, that's okay too. It's just we want to become this. We want this to become fairly automatic moving forward. But those three questions will usually always get you to the right spot. If you want to pause and try them on your own, and unpause when you're ready, feel free. Or you can follow along, and we'll chat about these guys too. Two x squared minus fifty. Can't first question you should ask is can I common factor? Here we can. It's going to make things simple. Let's if we can common factor, do it. We can take out a two here. We're left with x squared minus 25. All right. Uh, what's left over, is that a special pattern? We want to try to keep factoring if we can. Uh, that is a special pattern. It's a difference of squares. x squared minus 25, I can write as x minus 5, x plus 5. Or x plus 5, x minus 5, whatever you want. And look, just those two questions have got us there. We don't even care about this next one. We've, we've factored it using those first two questions. Again, We'd like this to become almost automatic. Uh, one more for us to try. How about this one? Can we common factor 4x squared plus 2x minus 6? Yes, we can. We can take out a 2. 2 times 2x squared plus x minus 3. What's left over? Is it a special pattern? No, nope. it's not difference of squares or perfect squares. Is it a simple trinomial? The 2x squared means it's not. So our la in this case, you know, our, la our last resort is we have to use decomposition. Or an alternative method you learned in earlier courses. I'll use decomposition, though. We're looking for numbers that multiply to 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And add to 1. What are those two numbers? Those two numbers are uh, positive 2, excuse me, positive 3 and negative two. So I'm gonna break up that x as plus three x minus two x minus three. And now I'll factor by grouping. I'm gonna keep this two out front and uh, personal preference, I might just switch to square brackets here. I'm gonna common factor my first pair and my second pair. And the first pair an x, we're left with two x plus three. Uh, in our second pair, we can take out a negative one. So minus 2x plus 3. And then we've got it, guys. We've got a common factor of 2 inside the square brackets there. We have a binomial common factor of 2x plus 3. And then we're left over with x and minus 1. And we got there. So three examples factoring quadratic functions um, using a, a variety of those uh, different skills. And now what I have for you guys to finish this off is just a few more complex ones. Throw my pen all over the place here, where we uh, have to might have to apply one or more of our skills. So I, what I would encourage you guys to do is maybe pause the video and see if you can try these on your own. Try applying those various strategies. If you get stuck, then unpause. Or if you finish them all, want to check, unpause the video, and you can kind of fast forward through it. But as usual, if you just want to stick around with me, let's do them together. I'm just going to pick up my tablet pen here. Dad oh, noises. Okay, so let's tr look at the first one and kind of talk through these. I'm looking at A, and I'm seeing it's a difference of two things. 36 subtract x plus 2 squared. And 36, I know it's a perfect square number. x plus 2 squared perfect square two guys this is the difference of squares so let's set up an answer so we'll have a six 
Uh, I like using the minus first, personal preference. And then x plus 2 squared, the root of that is just x plus 2. Now, we have to be careful. That's a binomial. I'll keep that in brackets right now, like that. So 6 minus x plus 2, and then 6 plus x plus 2. And now, in each individual big bracket, I can simplify things. So I have 6 minus x minus 2, 6 plus x plus 2. And this works down to 4 minus x, and then 8 plus x. And we could get just get there using difference of squares factoring. Be careful when one of the squares is a binomial. Just as you're, when you're subtracting a binomial, got to make sure to include those brackets. Otherwise, you'd have a little sign error there. All right, let's look at B. So I'm looking at B. Common factor first, I can see that right away, I can take out a two. So just do that automatically, four x squared plus four x plus one. All right, so I'm looking at this and I see four x squared and I see one. It looks like a perfect square trinomial to me. You know, in my mind, here's what I'm doing. I root four x squared, I get two x. I root one, I get one. If I double the product of that, do I get four x? The middle term, I do. It means it's a perfect square trinomial, and I can just go to my answer, 2x plus 1 squared. Really, this is kind of where we want to be. You know, A was a little trickier, but for B, B is where we want to be at this point in our math careers, being able to common factor automatically and recognize those special patterns very automatically as well. Leave out a couple more for you guys. All right, uh, so looking at C, uh, so the initially kind of look for common factors. There are none. Um, and it's not a quadratic, so I can't use trinomial factoring at all. But I see the number of terms. It's four terms. So I'm automatically asking myself, can I group factor? Are they even grouped in a way right now that I can group factor? And they are, guys. Check this out. I can common factor each pair. Well, kind of one, maybe more than the other. But the first two has an x squared in common, right? And if I divide out the x squared, I'm left with x minus 5. It looks very close to what I have at the end, except that the signs are reversed. I could factor out in minus 1 and also be left with x minus 5. Group factoring gets us there, guys. These have a common factor of x minus 5, a binomial common factor. And I'm left with x squared minus 1. Are we done here or can we go further? Well, we can go further looking at x squared minus 1. That's a difference of squares. x minus 1, x plus 1. So look for those key things that might give you a little bit of a clue like, hey, well, hey, I have four terms. Can I just try group factoring? I try group factoring and it worked. Uh, lastly, let's look at D. So I'm looking at D, and when I see two things separated by a subtraction, my mind immediately goes to difference of squares. And if you look at carefully at each term, each term is a perfect square. So I can set up my difference of squares pattern, A minus B, A plus B. Uh, what's the root of A to the power of 6 over 9? Well, it's A to the power of 3 over 3. If you multiplied that by itself, you would get A to the power of 6 over 9. And similarly, for b squared over 4, what do you multiply it by itself to get that? b over 2. b over 2 times itself gives you b squared over 4. And we didn't have to do anything complicated, guys. It's just a difference of squares. Um, so, you know, um, that was kind of a crash course on all the factoring strategies you guys have from your current grades. They, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a fact. We're taking grade 12 functions that we kind of need to be proficient at these types already. If, if, if you're not, or it's been a while, then I'd practice, I'd do all the practice that I've made available and I've made available like a lot of practice. It just, we, we need to have factoring down. We, again, we, we don't want to be worrying about the grade 10 factoring stuff when we're trying to do kind of higher level stuff. We don't want us to be spending our brain power doing the factoring. We want the factoring to get to be automatic. Uh, so, you know, that's my hope for you guys. Um, you know, please reach out if you uh, need any, need some, need some help or some more uh, resources on that. 
Um, but yeah, I tried my best to, I can cover, can't cover every single type of factoring question, but that's hopefully it's a little brush up and, uh, yeah, what's next. Um, uh, in our final little mini lesson, we introduce a skill, maybe introduce or maybe review for you a skill called rationalizing. And after we do that, we will be ready to get into our first unit of content. Uh, but until then, guys, you know, practice as much factoring as you need to. And um, hope you guys are staying well. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.